Hello and welcome to Vintage Elegance Inspiration. This is Karen and I am sharing the first of my summer journal collection, which I've been working on for a few months, but actually I had everything printed out, some of the covers done back in March, and I was preparing some of them to take to the retreat as prototypes or samples. Um, demos for people to have a look at various stages of a journal in progress. So what I've done now is gone back and completed them and I'm very pleased with what I've come up with. So they are all themed because I primarily use digitals by Raindrop Lila, Lydia, which is one of my favorite uh, digital artists right now. And her kits are so huge that you can make several journals out of just one of her kits. And I had fallen in love with the Rosie um, kit about a year ago. So I had it printed out and I got the ephemera as well. And I think I printed it out a couple of times. And it was just so much, um, so many pieces to work with that I stretched it out and I've got seven journals that I've completed, plus one that was uh, ready prior to the retreat. And that one I believe is using her kit, um, Patience, I think is the name of it. Let me look at my list. I've got quite a few digitals that I used. Yes, Patience. Also Peachy Pink. So those, blended very well together and then there is some of the paper cameo again in the uh, rose blush and some of Bella got some of tailor-made journals lovey and rose some of old Lucina Anne's uh, vintage girls and the garden herbal I've got chapter one papers antique florals and the vintage French invoices and then I've got a few little uh, vintage girl images that I will list. All of this will be in the description box below. And this first video is a bit of an overview. It's going to include a lot of those details. So I have named them all. And because it is primarily a rose themed journal digital kit, I gave them all rose names. So this one is called, I have named it Shabby Rose, and I, I was contemplating calling it Rose Garden. So maybe I'm going to call it Shabby Rose Garden. So there you go. And Shabby being primarily white and pink, that's what you're looking at right here. And then the cover is beautiful. Embroidered Dupioni silk. And it's almost got an opaly sheen to it, like a golden pinky rose blush color. Um, rose bronze, whatever you want to call it. And because it was so beautiful, I find it very difficult to, you know, permanently adhere something on the top of these, a lot of these covers, same with the velvets. So I came up with these cute little wrap skirts that I've been making and they each have one and that really finishes these journals off nicely. And then inside I've tucked the toppers, which is several pieces of handmade ephemera. I've just put this on here. I'm not sure I'm gonna keep it on there. I think it does need something but I don't know if this is the final resting place for this particular vintage brooch, but I do love it. it. It's very beautiful. So let's see, she is the tallest uh, skinny journal that I have made. Completed is 11 inches and it's five, five inches wide and a three quarter inch spine. And it's actually very, very, very full as you can see. I could have even done a one inch spine, but that's all right. You can take the ephemera out, you can take the skirt off, and she's ready to do some serious journaling in. So let's open it up and take a look inside. I have the, um, I think this is called Jersey Silk. This jaggered, jaggered, however you pronounce it. I think that's um, what this particular fabric is called. And I just rip it into ribbons that I use 
for my journals and I, I've got it in several colors. This is the ivory. I've also got pink and blue and I love using it because it's got a bit of that damask design in it. And then this is the skirt that comes off. So if you've seen my little wrap skirts before, it's using a base or a belt uh, for support that has uh, just a no stretch to it. And then I've just applied several layers of lovely laces. I've got this gathered one on the bottom and then another gathered one. And then this vintage applique that I found in my travels that I absolutely love with the satin um, binding there and then the pearl trim. And as I said, the butterfly, it will have some kind of a sweet little brooch on it. I promise, sometimes I do change things you know, if I don't, when I'm taking photos, which I do next, then I realize I, I just don't really like what I see and then I swap it out. So just give me some, give me some freedom to do that. I would really appreciate it. So this is the journal and the topper is several little pieces of ephemera. Each of the journals has the same uh, quantity. I'm just going to take this off right now because it's going to be quicker. So we've got a booklet that I've made, just used some of the peachy pink digitals and then some beautiful rose gold, metallic rose gold splattered uh, avocado dyed paper, granite paper, some of my shimmer mist paper, and then some pink parchment paper held together with these um, sweet little beads and lots of extra room to do some journaling on the go. I've used these sweet little vintage girls. These are by Artsology. Vintage, ch no. They are, these are Adora Australia. And I looked on her site and I don't see them listed anymore. Her name is Vicky Niesing. And I've used several of her kits in the past. These I printed out a few years ago already and they just didn't work for anything else that I made because I think they are a little on the large side but I thought they were so sweet. All of the digitals, uh, the images are of children or young girls. There's no vintage ladies or anything like that. This is, this is dedicated to our sweet young ladies. And that is done on some German book page as the background, just several layers collaged. And then I've avocado dyed some index cards, tied it with the crinkled seam binding and use some of my beautiful new buttons from Susie. Those are just so pretty. And then this piece I've come up with as a tag. What I did was I applied this blush colored, I believe it's, uh, how do you say it now? Oh shoot, it's not Venice lace, it's corded Elcyon lace. And then I've used some of uh, Nikki's Nikki CV's uh, hand dyed appliques that I just love. They were just so perfect for this project. And she is Ravioli Dreams on Etsy, if you're interested in checking out what other color she has. And I've just used some die cuts and grabbed 45 papers, lots of room to journal on the back. So this little stack, similar, is included in each journal. I don't know that I'll open up each one, but that's what you can expect to see. And then the beads, I'll give you a close up if I can. I love doing the dangle beads. This is probably the most favorite part of journal making for me. I absolutely love selecting all the beads and the charms that go on the bottom. And I've been tending to make them a little bit longer, which I love. And then I tie a little tiny bow out of the crinkled seam binding at the bottom. And what I see here is several vintage bracelets that I have deconstructed. Some are new beads, of course, but e each of them are just so unique. I absolutely love choosing the beads. When I'm watching other creators and they're sewing in their signature and then they come to the center and finish it off and cut those strings short, I just go, eek! You could be decorating those and it's just, I know it's personal style, but for me, I really, really love adding the dangles at the bottom. I, it's one of my signature touches that I just love doing. So here you've got a good look at the fabric that I used.
beautiful. I use the Craft X base underneath and then just sewed around the all of the edges and the spine. These are beautiful vintage buttons in Mother of Pearl. They are just amazing. I've used them before. I love them. So 21 pages each times four is 84. So there is a lot of real estate space here. I did use my waterfall page system again because it gives the back pages more room for you to write in. And that's what I like to feature in my journals is a lot of writing space. So I'm hoping I'm all in frame here. This is the inside of the front cover. What I said was I had uh, pre-printed all the pages and, pardon me, tea dyed them. And then last weekend, I noticed that Odusina has come out with a beautiful new uh, digital kit called Garden Herbal with the most gorgeous roses I've ever seen in a digital kit. And I had to buy them. And then I thought, well, I'll just do a special tag in the front of each journal. And then I'm going to explain why I gave each journal the name that I gave it. So it's got just a little story or a little bit of handwritten notes from me. This is Shabby Rose which is a relaxed romantic style that looks comfortable, inviting, and feminine. It's a soft-hued rose garden, rose pink and beige, hints of French style design. Rococo is alive and living in our hearts. So that's this sweet little tag that is included in the front lace pocket that I've added and some beautiful um, chiffon ribbon at the top couple of tags that I have made. This is a beautiful vintage lace that I buy and just a cardstock inside cover. A tag or journaling card that I've made using Edith Holden book page and just really roughed up the edges and distressed it. I love the image of the birds. And then these long tall tags that I've made, you may have seen them before from some book page some vintage wallpaper, which I love to use, vintage music paper, some stamping and some die cuts. And then you've got all that space on the back to journal on. So that is setting the tone for this journal. And it took me the longest to do the finishing touches on this one. I don't know why, maybe I kind of just left it till the end because the other journals were all similar size regular size and this one I just thought oh I'll just you know add all the pieces afterwards so I decided to do this little flap on the the uh, center here I just thought it gave it some extra character which I really like it's just several layers of uh, cardstock and then it also makes a firm place to grip when you're turning the page lots of stamping with my PSX stamps some fussy cutting and then here are the pages, a tall skinny tag, and you can use, it's reversible, you can use whichever side you would like. And then what I've done with these ones is just include a tiny little note. It, uh, it's just cardstock that I've folded, but I just thought it was so sweet. My little granddaughter loves to... Um, do crafts well it's not really doing crafts it's making a mess in this room but that's all right she's learning and we were going through this fairy book and she found this in a little envelope and she says what does it say Mimi and I said it says I love you so this is her little I love you note and I just have that on my desk here because it's so precious this is a tag made from the antique florals that I've used the gilding polish on backed onto parchment paper this is from paper cameo with the uh, tags that I used, I did some collaging, some texture paste, stenciling. I've got vintage lace at the top for the, the tab or the tag toppers, vintage buttons, and then some metallic thread uh, embroidery floss on the top and backed onto parchment paper. Or actually, these are all on cardstock. So they can easily be journaled on the backs of all the tags. Some Romeo and Juliet from Shakespeare. 
I got these beautiful, um, they look like vellum stickers, but they're calling them washi stickers. However, washi to me implies removable and repositional. These are not. Once they are down, they're, they're stuck and that's okay, but they're just so beautiful. I love the way they're almost translucent. This is some of my avocado dyed paper, which I've been really getting into lately and I just love it. Um, yeah, I, I just love making it. It's awesome. Some of the antique florals, a, a piece of Bible page. And then this is one of the pockets that you get from Raindrop Lila's Rosy Ephemera Kit. And then I just cut out some circles and use these sweet little uh, vintage tickets. Now those are Artsology. Vintage children tickets. Those are just so sweet. And there's some more uh, texture paste. Or one of these tags. I think I made almost 100 of these for all the journals. I didn't use quite all of them up, but a lot of them. And I know that she uh, designed the colors mostly to be used as red. But to me, red and pink and orange just go together so beautifully. If you... You know, it's not quite monochromatic, of course, but I think they all tie in. To me, they do. I love it. The whole theme is roses. More stamping. Some more of my shimmer mist paper. And what I did here was I tied the, this tag right on to the top of the page so that it wouldn't move as much. And I've got some vintage earrings that I've deconstructed and made a whole pile of dangles out of them and used them at the on the edges of paper clips this time. Some vintage music paper, granite paper, just plain pink note paper. That's antique florals and some beautiful vintage out of cotton lace with insert and I have added the um, crinkled seam binding in there. Some green parchment paper and I've got a lot of tags in this one. So I've got Graphic 45 paper. This I believe is Lovey and Rose kit from Taylor Made Journals. The Sweet Little Girls. Stamperia. Tim Holtz with part of the rosy ephemera piece there. And then the antique florals done with gilding polish. So all of these can be written on. Of course. And they just got tucked back in there. And I haven't decided yet if I'm going to put this here or not. I probably will. So I'll just tuck it in there. Vintage lace. Beautiful hand-dyed lace. Most of these are by Susie Oberman from Mary Not Martha. And when I took on this project, I thought I need to have a color of lace if I'm going to decorate the edge page edges that will um, be enough to do six or seven journals and so I had a stack of these and I have just reordered some more and they arrived yesterday and I'm waiting to open my package until I'm finished recording all these videos and my little granddaughter wants to help me open them because she loves packages from anywhere but especially from Susie and it must be the tone in my voice when I tell her these are so special and she just loves opening them and she makes a pile of all the laces and she just treasures them. And I'm so glad that she's already seeing what she likes in the way of colors and so on. It's, it's so fun to watch. Just some extra journaling cards. Uh, this is Emily Dixonson Poetry, vintage book page. And another one of the tags. I've used some of Odusina Ann's uh, flowers. Pink parchment paper done with this beautiful vintage lace. We've got Edith Holden book page as the center and I chose the month of August because we're getting there. It's kind of midsummer. That, that's what I was thinking of all these journals is midsummer. So here are these dangle beads. 
uh, and charms close up you've got this beautiful moss green and gold these both have roses pink roses painted on them and I just love them so that's there if you don't like dangles that's fine you can you can cut them off and put them there's plenty of string here you can put them on anything else whatever you choose And there is plenty of space for writing. With these journals, I created some more lace swatch tags. And what I did was I took Sheila's beautiful embellished trims in more the red and the orangey colors. And of course this has green, so it's perfect too. And then I avocado dyed some of my white lace, vintage lace, and added them to this beautiful artisan paper some tag toppers, the swatch toppers, and made some beautiful tall tags out of them. I think they're beautiful. And then what I've got here on the back side is just one of the button cards I used. As you can imagine, when I made all those tags, I went through, well, not 100, but probably at least 50 vintage buttons. And that was fun. So I had a lot of cards left. Another sticker, the washi sticker there. As you get to the back of the journal, the pages become wider because in the front, they're more narrow. I love this lace. This is beautiful. And then I've got this pocket at the bottom of the page here where I have added just some extra tea dyed paper for journaling and then a couple of tags. I love these sweet little girls as well. These are called, these are from Shabby Cottage Studio. They're vintage children. To me, they just look so vintage, truly vintage. And another tag with some lovely, uh, very sheer tool at the top. A tiny um, dangle of the beads from the earrings and some more paper beautiful vintage lace on the page edge here and then I've got these journaling cards that I've made the same as the ones on the the front pocket I use um, index paper and I just cut it in half. It's already got the holes punched in it. I use this French vintage book page, might even be antique. I added some cheesecloth underneath. And these lovely images are Odocina and um, she calls them girls photos. And then I have this beautiful vintage green, um, actually might be antique trim it's just so delicate and beautiful and then the crinkled seam binding in the green with vintage buttons at the top i can't remember if this goes here or not but that's the beauty of ephemera we can move it around vintage music paper and then here i've made a stack of papers and made my own little swatch top that's removable just put the word Victoria in there pretty pink charm at the top and one of the flowers on my pink shimmer mist paper I've got a tag that I created on the back of parchment paper from antique florals just some beautiful Anna Griffin paper and then a vintage envelope from 1939 stamped date stamped and those are just extra spaces to write on if you're going to use this as a, a journal as it was intended. And if not, if you just keep it or gift it away to someone else, it's sure to be a fun thing to look at. This has become my favorite applique. And I'm hoping that Susie was able to find some more because it is absolutely stunning for these tall, skinny journals. Isn't that just amazing? I just think it's so beautiful. The color, it's like a beigey blush. And then it's got the pearls sewn into, right into the applique 
just so very beautiful. I love the way it dangles over the page side. Some more beautiful uh, blush colored lace. The Bible page, some stamping. All this beautiful lace on every, almost every page in the back of the book. Then what I did was I made envelopes just out of uh, some decorative paper, but I took vintage hankies and instead of using the typical, you know, how I, you do them in the corner of your journal page, I used them for envelope flaps. And then I added some of the beautiful appliques done in the blush color on the flaps and I stitched them with a very pale pink thread on my machine. And then just some note paper inside for extra journaling space. This was actually part of a file folder. I believe these are Lovey and Rose kit from Lorna at TaylorMade Journals. A journaling card from Edith Holden book page that I distressed on the page edges. And then this envelope just straddles over both sides of the page here. And the envelope itself is a pretty piece of ephemera on this side. Another vellum sticker, or washi tape, sorry. Another one of these sweet little journaling cards that I've made with some sweet little vintage uh, buttons tied onto the end of the crinkled seam binding. And then some uh, vintage ephemera here. These are part of the Niagara Falls um, postcards. This is eight. No, that can't be right. 1952. Yeah, that, that's right. What do you know? It says, love, Karen. Ha! Ah. I just think they're stunning. And the colors were just perfect for this page. I was really, really pleased with them. This is another tall tag that I've made with vintage wallpaper, some Lakta paper, die cut, stamping, and then vintage book page backed onto parchment paper and then one of the pockets from the ephemera kit a circle and one of the little girl images just complete that page and then these are tuck spots you can add whatever you would like into those those extra pockets I haven't stuffed them everything full but close to it another tag from the kit that I've added beautiful vintage lace and a vintage button to and then just a tall tag of Tim Holtz paper for extra journaling space on the back. And then this is the end of the journal. And what I've done is I have made these cool pockets um, designed by Marlene from Uniquely Ella. And what they are is you tuck things from the bottom and from the top. And it's very clever, actually. I think it's a great idea for all those extra little pieces. Another tag from the kit. And then what I did was I did not attach them at the top. So it's open and I just included an extra piece of uh, one of the pages from the digital kits to use for extra writing. And that's it. So this is Shabby Rose Garden. How beautiful is she? And that concludes my first video in this series. Thank you for watching. Thank you for taking the time to listen to me chatter away. And I hope you've enjoyed it. I hope you're going to be interested in seeing the other journals that I have completed in this series. They're all quite different. Um, but, of course, the theme of roses is very prevalent. So with that, I'm going to sign off and we'll move on to the next one. Have a great day.